Thank you very much. Hello, I'm David, and I'm here at the Met Office headquarters in Exeter to speak to the team behind the brand new Met Office mobile app. Every day, millions of people from all around the world access the forecasts delivered by this team of experts behind me. I'm here to chat with Derek Ryle, head of the Public Weather Service, about the important role that the mobile app plays in communicating these forecasts to the public. More and more important is getting weather information to people and to organisations so that they can make those decisions that either protect their lives or their property or make their day-to-day -day lives that bit better. Now the Met Office has had apps previously but why has it released a new mobile app? This is the third app. When we released our, our first one uh, was about 10 years ago it was a little bit of a punt. We didn't really know. Smartphones were a little bit in their infancy. Um, but since then the smartphone and the app has become for many of us one of the main ways in which we access information, whether it be news or, or, or weather. And so, for example, the last app, we've seen upwards of well over 10 million uploads and we see enormous traffic. It actually gets used far more than the main web. Now, you mentioned there were over 10 million users of the previous version of the Met Office app. So why did you choose to release an altogether new app this time around? I think it was time to freshen it up. The old app has been around for a few years now. It's a little bit slow, uh, it's looking a little bit tired and so bringing something up to date. A key element of the app is actually working with the public or user engagement to really try and understand what people want from weather. So an important part of this app is making sure that warnings are readily available, easy to see and easy to understand. So we've heard about how important the Met Office mobile app is to communicating the weather forecasts to the public, but exactly how do the public want to use the app? Met Office user research lead Philippa Rose has been finding out exactly that. So Philippa, tell me about your role in the development and delivery of the Met Office app. I was brought on board to concentrate on user research and move from a more kind of waterfall approach to a more agile approach and introduce user-centred design. And how has the research that you undertook manifested itself in the app? At every stage I've been working very closely with the design team to ensure that any, any research round, which we've generally done one every two weeks, has um, been discussed at length with the design team and small changes have been made as a result of the research on an ongoing basis. So a research round every two weeks, I imagine that's probably quite different to what's happened in the past, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so rather than focusing on the business needs and thinking about what features or what scientific data um, the Met Office would like to communicate, we have turned that upside down by stripping all that out and really just trying to find out what people need to know about the weather to make decisions in their lives. Now we've heard about how important the app is in getting the weather message out to the public and how user research has shaped the way the app should work. So let's talk to one of the team behind the app, Chris Baton. So what's the development process that you've used in order to feed in all of these user requirements into the finished product? With Agile Delivery, we're delivering two-week sprints, two-week activities of work, where we'll do some research on user requirements first, maybe create some designs on paper and some prototypes, go out and test them with users, say, is this what you're thinking of? Get their feedback, do some development, and then when we've delivered something, go back out to those same users again and say, is this still what you're thinking of? And they'd say, yeah, that's more or less it, but how about if? and we'll take those thoughts and ideas on board and use those to guide ourselves. So in fact, we won't usually go straight to the solution. We'll iterate around a little bit, but what we have at the end might not even be what any of us thought we were going to start with, but it's certainly by the end of, uh, by the end of deployment is what everybody wants. You know, I love the idea of the Met Office app getting its data from a weather cloud somewhere. Talk to me about the role that the cloud plays here. We have a large Met Office infrastructure which is designed for processing uh, forecast data with supercomputer data all there. It's all there, all for the taking. And the old app used to point directly at this infrastructure. By moving some of that critical infrastructure out from within the Met Office infrastructure into the cloud, that gives us two things. It gives us flexibility to work slightly more freely within that without impacting any of our services 
But the other thing it gives us is the ability to react and respond to uh, massive customer demand. So far today we've looked at the background to the Met Office's new weather app and we've also looked at all the research and development that have gone into it. To wrap things up, let's talk about the future with the head of digital here, Owen Tribe. We've spoken to a number of people today who've been instrumental in bringing the app to market, but what are the next steps? What we have now is we have a really good, robust, modern platform that we can build upon. So therefore the things that you don't see in the app right now, such as maps uh, and all sorts of other information that we have available to us, will start to filter through into the app to let you make better decisions. The new app is, is fundamental to everything we need to do at the Met Office. We need to reach as many people across the whole of the UK population in a way that's meaningful to them. Looking even further into the future, if I may, let's talk about some pervasive technologies, you know, Internet of Things and, and wearables and so on. How do you see the Met Office feeding into those? The app, and in terms of what you interact with as a user, is really the tip of the iceberg. What's sitting underneath is a very, very powerful layer of technology that can integrate sideways into all the other applications within your phone and within all of the other devices and ecosystem, if you like, um, that your phone is part of. Um, therefore, part of our plans for the future is how we can enable other apps, other devices, other developers to actually come together and make the use of all of the weather and the weather information that we now have available sitting directly within your mobile phone. You know, I've genuinely learnt a lot today here at the Met Office about what goes into creating an entirely new app. And I can't wait to see how the Met Office app continues to evolve in the coming months and years.